And welcome back to a special Great Day Live. Uh, throughout this hour, we are here at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. We've moved a little bit. We've moved over into the pavilion lobby here, and I think that's just one of the exciting things because we want you to come visit here is all the different spaces and how they're used in such an interactive way. Uh, we are standing in front of the civil rights self-guided markers here I'm with Kate Fossil, professor at UofL. Women's Thank Studies, you. Gender Sexuality Studies, Founding Director of the Institute of Social Justice. I could go on and on and on and on, but very instrumental in making sure that there was a self-guided tour of these civil rights markers, definitely. Yes, absolutely. Thanks. And I'm a historian by training, mm -hmm. so this is my field. I've written a lot on the Black Freedom Movement in Louisville, various social movements, and I just felt that this was an important addition to, as the city has grown yes. throughout the 21st century in tourism, this is an important part of the story. Important part, and what was it also like to kind of make sure that there were markers along the way and it was accurately represented because I'm sure you're probably still getting information on we need this additional marker and this additional marker how did it come together well um, it's not all about markers right so the markers are a separate process mm -hmm. but we use the markers as kind of you know anchors for what we you know this route and we basically um, I assembled a group of historians and knowledgeable people knowledgeable in history from the mm -hmm. community there were four or five of us and just sat down and brainstormed the important sites but honestly there were like 40 of them yeah. well you can't have a tour with 40 stops and really 22 is a lot so the the tour is self-guided so you could do a portion of it you could just do the downtown portion mm -hmm. you could just do the West Muhammad Ali Boulevard portion you could do the Shively portion so it's very um, subject to what a group or a, a you know a family or an individual wants to get from it and um, what do you hope the visitors learn when they take this self-guided tour? Well, I think the main thing that we're, there are two things we really want them to learn. One is this very important portion of black history that's not only black history, it's toward a more perfect union, toward a more united states and a more united commonwealth that the changes that this tour documents talks about. That's one thing. And I think the other thing is it's a way in to looking at, yes, this was huge progress, the uh, ending of legal segregation. That's enormous. Yeah. But there's a lot of unfinished business for the black community in Louisville and more broadly. And so it's a way into talking about yeah. that and a way to introducing that, you know, yes, to the black, to youth in the black community, but as importantly to white Louisvillians and other Louisvillians of various ethnicities who aren't aware of this story and should be. And what are some of the landmarks along the way? What can we see along the tour? Let's say if we're in downtown. Okay, well, the downtown portion. The first thing that I think that y we have partners in the tour mm -hmm. and the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage is a partner. I, I did this tour on behalf of the Ann Braden Institute for Social Justice Research at the university. So we were the lead on the tour, but KCAAH was our partner. Muhammad Ali Center is our other partner. So that would be an important starting place. Um, the I think the Western Branch Library, which was literally the first library in the nation, or certainly in the South, set up exclusively for black patrons who were excluded from white libraries at that time. That's a very important site. But right down, if you're right downtown, you can see both a, a Kentucky Highway marker and a series of um, artistic markers along Fourth at Chestnut that document the desegregation of those downtown businesses in the 1960s at a time when, you know, downtown Louisville was really like the place to go. Yes. Well, we can get those brochures and information. I know here at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage, if you want to stop by uh, to t begin taking the self-guided tour, they have a wonderful pamphlet that will help you kind of guide your way. And Kate, thank you so much for taking You're the time. You're quite welcome. We are going to step on over into the lecture gallery just right around the corner here. It's one of the featured exhibits there. They have the Kentucky African American Encyclopedia. And as Nyla Spencer found out, this book is the key to the mission to preserve and promote African American heritage right here in Kentucky. Take a look.
African Americans in Kentucky have a rich history in the Bluegrass State. And a resource for learning about that history is the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. Today I'm joined by Dr. Gerald Smith. He's a history professor at the University of Kentucky, as well as a pastor at Pilgrim Baptist Church and on the board of directors of the center. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much for being here. So let's talk about your relationship with the center. How, how did that relationship begin? It actually began about 10 years ago at the time I was serving as the vice chair of the Kentucky African American Heritage Commission and was later appointed as chair of that commission. So the Kentucky African American Heritage P uh, Commission uh, preserves and promotes uh, the study of African American history in terms of not only uh, people, places, events, and organizations, but also doing whatever we can to get more information out about the Kentucky African American experience. Which is super important. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, what is your role currently here? Well, currently I serve uh, on the board mm -hmm. uh, and supporting, you know, the mission of the center. That's amazing. So I know that you have a new book coming out. Tell me all about it. Yeah. The, the new book is titled Slavery and Freedom in the Bluegrass State, Revisiting My Old Kentucky Home. Mm -hmm. It actually evolved out of my work with the Kentucky African American Encyclopedia. Uh, the Kentucky African American Encyclopedia was um, published in 2015. Uh, there were three general editors, myself, Karen McDaniels, and John Harden. We had 16 uh, members on the staff. We had 150 some uh, writers for the encyclopedia. There are over 1,100 entries in the encyclopedia, 142 photographs. Um, of the 120 counties in Kentucky, 86 counties are covered. Uh, people, places, events, organizations, institutions, uh, you name it. I mean, it is the major reference work for African American history in Kentucky. Yeah, so it sounds like you're obviously doing a lot of research and then you also are recording that uh, mm -hmm. research. So tell me, why is it important to keep the conversation going about the role that African Americans play um, in history right here in Kentucky? Well, I think first of all, we have to keep in mind that, that African Americans in the state of Kentucky were very much a part of the social, cultural, political, economic development of the state, you know, from slavery to freedom. And then secondly, you know, we are a part of the, the larger historical narrative of American history. And then thirdly, I think it's very important that um, we tell the lives, the life story of those Kentucky African Americans, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm sure that your research has led you to a lot of different areas in Kentucky. What is the most uh, memorable moment or memorable place that you've been? Uh, clearly, the most memorable place for me was visiting my old Kentucky home, yeah. Federal Hill in Bardstown, because from that experience, the seed was planted for me to work on this, this recent publication, Revisiting My Old Kentucky Home. And then when I say revisit my old Kentucky home, um, I want to focus on re-examining and rethinking about how we study and learn uh, and teach uh, Kentucky African American history. Yes, and I think that the center plays a huge role in creating that discourse and making sure that people are, um, you know, continuing that research. So tell mm -hmm. me, um, being here, why should people come and be a part of these conversations and want to research mm -hmm. some of these things? Well, I think the center is just idea one in terms of the exhibits. Uh, whether they're photographed or the real exhibit, exhibits that are in place. It allows individuals to connect with that past, to share with the next generation what that past was like in real time and with real documents and real exhibits, but also a place for conversation, you know, panels, uh, lectures, uh, planning in terms of how we move forward in preserving this history. Awesome, and you mentioned two books, so I want to know where's the best place for people to learn more information about some of the books that you've written on or um, have upcoming? Yeah, they're, um, you know, you can get them at your local bookstores. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the Kentucky African American Encyclopedia, uh, Slavery and Freedom in the Bluegrass State, Revisiting My Old Kentucky Home. Uh, I have another book titled A Black Educator in the Segregated South, Kentucky's Rufus B. Atwood, who was the president of Kentucky State College for 33 years. So there may be some Kentucky State alum that are interested in that book as well. And I'm now writing a new general history uh, on uh, the Kentucky African American experience. Wow, and so if people wanna keep up with you and your journey and learn more from you, what's the best way for them to get uh, in Just email me at, I'm a history professor at the University of Kentucky. I'm, I don't have a Twitter account, I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> 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 Just the old fashioned way. Coming up, we're exploring the visitor experience here at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. How a barbershop, a theater, and a famous sculptor play an important role here. Stay with us.